morning, uh, morning folks, morning Martin, morning Silver, or evening Martin, and morning Silver, right, I presume, Bulgaria, yep, morning, hope you guys are well, um, it is Wednesday, is it Wednesday, I keep forgetting the days, Wednesday today, and um, what does that mean, is that morning, <laughs> morning me or morning Ash, yeah, I thought so, um, <coughs> nice morning here in Dubai, actually. It's still, it definitely is getting warmer. That is for damn sure. Uh, Amira, you'll know that. But um, it's still okay. It's still manageable. It's still golfing weather, which is okay. Um, <coughs> and dare I say it, the markets seem to be a little bit better. They seem to be a little bit better. I usually have an inkling with my, uh, with my scan in the morning. And, and there's a few things that I do certainly like this morning, uh, which could be setting up for some nice trades. Nice trades, finally. Finally. Uh, also, look at this. Um, I'm in now for my Psy, what are they called? Psy Stock Net Institute 10K. So you can see here, I've just literally set up my account. Hit 10 grand in there. As I, I, I got a kind of a discount on it. I think they had a March, March Bonanza or something um, for 15% off, I think it was. Normally, I think it'd be around 800 pound, which is... Um, what's that in dollars? 800 pounds in dollars? I can't remember. But it was basically around $1,000, um, which seems expensive. I know you could say, well, my Forex funds, 200K is $1,000. I get that. But um, obviously, we have no challenge. We have no verification. We've got nothing like that. My personal plan is here. Firstly, I want to make sure they're, they're authentic, they're reliable. You know, I might, you know, hopefully, by the time that I, I come to getting a little bit of money out of it, I want to test it. But ultimately, my goal is here is just to continue to scale this account. And um, if you don't know, every 10%, they double this account. So my goal for, you know, for this is just to take my time. Um, there's no pressure, no time pressure, which I like. Uh, good for me personally. And uh, just continue to scale this account up to whatever I can. I don't know how anybody trades with these charts. This is just the default chart that comes up, right? Looking at this, like I could not trade with a black background in this kind of charts. I mean, I'm looking at this. How much nicer is that than that? I mean, I don't understand how people can do this. Um, anyway, that's by the by. That's just my personal time. Hey, Zula. Good to see you, buddy. Best time for the beach. Yeah, exactly, Amir. Best time for the beach. Okay, let's get into the market, shall we? SPX today, I think a good example yesterday of is, yeah, I don't understand it, Silver, honestly. how I mean, I can't even make any sense of that. You know, it's difficult, right? <coughs> just just, just little things like having a nice plain background and a white background in this, just for me, it looks a lot easier. It does look, it looks like I know what I'm talking about, right? But in reality, it doesn't really work. <laughs> but uh, morning, Audrey. Okay, so SPX today, yeah, as I was saying, it was a good example. Am I recording this? Yeah. A good example of, of waiting for the market's reaction to the news rather than the news itself, because we had this little... Um, Bump pop on that CPI news, obviously inflationary concerns, although the CPI data was a bit less than expected, and uh, we immediately dropped. So we are coming a little bit up right now. Nothing real much yet, you know, from a daily perspective, unless we get a good da uh, daily close today in terms of a, a bullish bar creating that evening star, ideally on higher volume. You know, we're still in pullback mode, and, um, you know... <sighs> Waiting for London and US today, we'll, we'll kind of decide what we want to do. It doesn't look great. There's no doubt about that. It doesn't look great. We're kind of getting a little bit more impulsive action to the downside, a good rejection yesterday. So whether this is ready to continue in that upward trajectory or within this current up uptrending market, let's say, recent uptrending market, we have to wait and see. So there's no confirmation yet, and I'm still going to go. It's in pullback mode um, and a bit more slight risk off slight risk off. I think here is your now your key area. You know, yesterday this was our key area because that was the recent swing um, from our corrective. But I'm trying to get rid of this. There we go. Let me remove this. But now here is our key area because we've got a new anchor. We've got a new, technically not a swing because we've not broken the lows here, uh, broken and closed. But it is certainly an anchor. And this is what I would consider key. Whereas if we break above here, it might start to look a little bit better. So Let's wait for the market to tell us what it wants to do. Right now, it's still in pullback. Hey, look, uh, quite a few people on the uh, stream. Angel, Angel, what's your name, mate? Um, or she, he or she? Let me know. Uh, good to see you. Dill, Audrey, John, morning. Zula as well, good morning. 
Okay, dollar, the dollar's pushing. <clears throat> Again, a good lesson in waiting for the market's reaction. I could meet my hat, this could come down, but you know, when I saw the news and, and certainly when I saw GU push, I just didn't buy it. You know, I just had an inkling feeling that this would push and, and same with that dollar because of that, you know, flight to the safe haven asset. Inflation is still very high, albeit we we didn't meet expectations, which should have been quite a good thing. I just think this dollar continues to rise and going with that trend. And I'm not going to call an end to this. Dollar strong. You got to set up buying the dollar. Continue with that until otherwise stated. We've broken through this wick now yesterday, which is always a good sign. So yeah, setups on the dollar absolutely still make sense. Uh, let's have a quick look at GU. Uh, GU. I don't know what it's doing. Oh, it's come back off. Good. This is a, this was one where I thought I was going to send a message in the group yes saying yesterday if this doesn't go down down now I'll eat my hat. <laughs> you know we had an inclination here I thought this might move to the downside obviously a push up on news and we've completely rejected that. So this is starting to look really nice. Still in this the good thing about GU is the swap is very low so it's nothing really that we can be concerned about but I'd like it to melt. This is what I'm waiting for. I want this to melt now. It's certainly in a position where it can go. And uh, just looking for this to, to close underneath here, the four hour, if it does close like this, will be very nice. And uh, certainly looking for something like this, right? This is what we're looking for. And um, I certainly think it's in a position to do that. But we could continue just slobbering on down here, possibly. Uh, but we continue to ride that wave as much as it wants to go until it, until it finishes. So GU is still looking quite good. Still looking quite good. V reversal to the upside on UJ. Yeah, have a look at that, Martin. Have a look at that. Okay, watch this today. USD Swiss. Two options in USD Swiss. Swiss. You think to re-enter in one hour for breakout and retest? Down there. Yeah, would make sense. Silver. Yeah, would make sense. From here. Probably consider this your initial structure. Breakout, retest, move to the downside, higher time frames are still great. Yep, I agree with that bias, Silver. Absolutely. I like GU down. I like it. It just needs to go. It just needs to, you know, it, uh, it kind of reminds me of Euro Swiss. You remember Euro Swiss a few months ago where it just like, just melt. You've given me a few indications it wants to melt. Just go now. And uh, hopefully it does today. Hopefully it does today. Although hope and prayer is not a trading strategy. So USD Swiss. USD Swiss is still on for a four hour breakout. This is setting up exactly as we want it to. Head and shoulders cut with handle. We have a corrective, albeit it's quite a messy corrective. That is, doesn't matter to me. I don't really care. Um, albeit I was looking for an aggressive entry, didn't quite get it. So looking for this to come up here, another little reload on that 20. The 20 is close by price action, which is good. Um, so whether we get something like this or accumulation for a break to the upside, I like that. We look where it is on a daily. We are at B wave. We've got our V reversal. We've got a few bars back. I know we've got some wicks here. That's okay. I don't mind that. I'm looking at this zone here. Um, and uh, if we consider this an ABC, it's a good area to break out from with that dollar being strong as well. So USD Swiss to the upside. Um, I do like, I do like. The other option here is we've got a V reversal, Martin. V reversal, pull back into it. Just enough, I would say. I wouldn't mind a little bit of accumulation before a break. Retest, move to the upside. So we like where we are. Um, we like we are where we are in the daily. And um, in terms of higher time frames, we've got that confluence. We've got our V reversal. We, we like where we're breaking out from in terms of the four hour here. Because uh, remember, we are coming from this. So breaking out from here. A few bars of uh, consolidation. Actually, my favorite types of breaks. So if we go into a channel, I like the channels that break, accumulate a little bit, and then move to the upside. So maybe that's what we're getting here, which is which is pretty nice. So USD Swissy, looking for a breakout retest. <coughs> yeah, three candle retest. Yep, yep. This is good. This is nice. USD Swiss. USD Sec. Uh, another V. Um, going with that healthy uptrending market, we cannot look for this as a breakout in the four hour, but that's okay. Uh, looking to break above this 200, we do have healthy price action moving into it. So remember, I'm using my four hour and daily on a breakout retest for higher time frame confluence. So it's not like I have to have this. I, if I'm having that, that's for a four hour breakout. But because we've got this healthy market, not extended, looking to break above this 200 and this key area, this for me is really nice. We look at USD SEC, 
and and this this is a great example of potentially ready to move you know we're coming out of this this section here yes okay a v reversal but we've also got confluence with this outside bullish engulfer coming on high volume breaking through potential structure here going with a larger trend so albeit this isn't great we can say well possible re v reversal but now we're looking at longs we're saying well we are we in this channel downtrend that we are now breaking out of above that 20 20 is starting to curl around and um, yeah usd sec to the upside is another one that i do like so another v reversal martin another v reversal nice digestion looking for a break above retest move to the upside those two trades in terms of breakout retest, I really like. And I certainly think they are worth, uh, um, not even worth a trade. They are a trade if it, if it decides to go and break out. So uh, 30 minute, one hour on USD Swiss and USD ZIC. Pound Swiss, Pound Swiss is still setting up and uh, setting up very nicely, setting up very nicely. So four hour chart daily is good as I talked about yesterday. We are certainly ready to move a nice pullback to that 20, uh, looking for a proper breakthrough, a structure here. This is good, right? This is good, perfect. This is what I want to see. Uh, four hour chart, what we're looking for in terms of a breakout, the structure is here. And um, I will be looking for an aggressive uh, entry somewhere up here if I get it. But here, one, two, and we're in this accumulation phase, okay, here. We do have, let me know if I'm going too quickly, guys. I know sometimes when I get in a roll, I, I go quick and I understand there's people new here that might not understand what I'm talking about, but you will start to understand as I go along. But we have our anchor, so I would like a little bit of a better risk reward. So if we can come up here and uh, come back down, that would be enough for me to take this break, um, considering all factors. So 20 period coming down, just looking for a, um, a touch on that 20 or a little bit of accumulation. Um, to take this break to the downside, but we are certainly looking very nice. Pound Swiss, potential shorts could be, could be an aggressive entry today. Uh, it could be an aggressive entry today. Uh, possibly more for tomorrow, I would think, on a four hour chart or certainly towards the end of the week. But yeah, I like that to the downside. I like that to the downside. Pound Swiss shorts. <coughs> USD Swiss, I went through oil. Oil is looking decent as well. Possibly. Uh, again, I was looking for an aggressive entry on this. I didn't quite like the price action moving into it. So right now, the aggressive entry is probably not on the cards from this structure. But as long as we get something like this, is okay. I can look for a breakout. Uh, as I said yesterday with the daily chart, this was looking quite good. The daily push yesterday is is not too bad. So if we do see this push to the upside, that's okay. I just take it off and I don't look at shorting it. But if we do get a rejection today um, and oil looking to come back and tag that area, this would look pretty nice. This would look pretty nice. Ideally, ideally this turns into a possible ABC. So ideally we look at this and maybe an aggressive entry up here before coming down, i.e. getting our ABC head and shoulders, which is obviously what we like to see for a break to the downside. So oil looks pretty good. Well, my analysis is working so well on the one hour chart. It's like going fishing inside a fish tank. Yeah, good. That's what I like to hear, Martin. That's what I like to hear. Always good to hear. Um, so I presume you'll be ready to start your FTMO soon. Just so in, in case people aren't aware, Martin has decided to wait a little bit. He was the 50K winner last month. But, um, which any of you can do, by the way, if you, if you are a winner, you want to wait a little bit. So Martin was waiting a little bit before he starts it. I'm sure you don't mind me saying that, Martin. USD knock. USD knock is breaking through, un unfortunately. I didn't really want this to happen. But uh, if it does indeed break through, I can look for a breakout retest. I'd rather we fake here. You know, I'd rather we fake here, come back down and accumulate a little bit before we take the break. But um, what I want and the what the market will give me is two different things. So if we do break through uh, a retest on this four hour would coincide with that 220, which would, would be perfect for a break to the upside. So USD knock is, is something I really liked. I kind of wanted to be involved in that trade, but I cannot take a break right now. Uh, I just needed to accumulate a little bit more. We can look at this as a head and shoulders, obviously from here as well. But yeah, I'd rather this fake and accumulate, but if it does break, I can look for that retest. 
And finally, Euro Pound. Euro Pound. Euro Pound, potential daily short uh, here, but I'll go into the four hour because that's probably a little bit more prominent. From our larger V, getting our pullback right now, not quite enough. This could possibly turn into, again, our favorite ABC. If we get something here, I'll look for an aggressive entry on this as well. But looking for the same thing, broken record, accumulating into the zone, breakout of that area. Going with that longer term trend, the euro is weak. Every push in the euro on this trend has been sold into. And I do not see why that should change right now. Longer term trend, the trend is our friend. Uh, potential on this on the daily. So if we look at the daily chart here, if I zoom in, we've got our 20 pullback, but we need to digest this latest impulse, which I don't feel we have done enough of just yet. So I need a little bit more here from a daily perspective, but as a higher time frame confluence on our four hour chart, that will also be in play. So yeah, I, as I said, I, I kind of like this market, you know, every one of these setups that I've got here, um, I like, you know, USD Swiss, if I get it, USD SEC, if I get it, I really like. Pound Swiss, I really like. That could be the closest in terms of breakouts. USD Swiss is getting there. Um, oil is getting there. USD NOC is potentially breaking out, but we'll have to wait and see. And Euro Pound, again, I, I like this. This is the first time in probably two months I've woken up and thinking, okay, maybe there's something here. You know, maybe this is the end of this horrible two-month market uh, where, where I'm personally not getting a lot of setups and, uh, and not much flowing movement. And uh, it could look pretty good. It could look pretty good. So let's see. Let's see. Okay, what do you guys want me to look at? Just for the newer people, Angel, if you don't know, if you want me to look at any charts, you can put it in the chat here, and uh, we'll go through them. If you've got any questions, let me know. And uh, we do it all live. Um, yeah, everything is done live here. There's no bullshit, basically. Real trading. Show your wins, show your losses, and we're all trying to improve. Okay, I'll do, I think Silva the first one. Aussie CAD. <coughs> Aussie CAD, ABC, yeah, I can see that, okay. Aussie CAD. I had a quick look at this before I, I came on. Aussie CAD. Yeah, I like the daily. I like the daily. If this does push on, it'll look a, a, a decent bit better from our V-reversal corrective. Um, four hour if you're looking at this latest impulse yeah you could be looking impulse corrective push on so you know in terms of visualizing what price action will look like if we do break above that area will be good you've got your setup here um yeah we need the market to kind of show us something now but uh i can see where you're looking at abc here larger basing structure push on yeah if it does go silver yeah then yeah it looks as if it's falling down, but I know that doesn't matter. Or you'll just take it off your watch list. But if it does decide to push up, then, um, yeah, it will look nice. Yeah, I like that idea. <laughs> Nothing much to say, Silver. I like that idea. Good good bar yesterday. We could be getting some dissection within that. Sometimes when you get a decent bar, you do get a little bit of dissection. But if we do move on and break through these highs, then it'll look okay. The only worry would be, are we getting this? In which case, if we are, then you don't take the trade, right? So... Yeah, I like that idea. I like that idea. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know what you're looking for. So if, it, you, do, if you do get that, it'll look quite nice. Yeah, I agree with that. USD yen, you're already in. USD yen. This yen weakness. You know, it's just a lot weaker than I thought. A lot weaker than I thought. So if you're in this, yeah, I mean, from a daily perspective, I mean... It's absolutely moving. It's a shame on that aggressive entry we got caught out in this little move, but I mean, I can't, I can't complain about that particular trade from down here. Uh, but this is motoring. I mean, absolutely motoring. So what's your trade? Oh yeah, I see your three bar here. One, two, three. So are you entering on this particular candle here? Or are you just entering on the third candle when you see that slight rejection here, Martin? See what I mean? So which candle is it you're entering on? Just so I'm aware. After this last 50K practice test, I have a strategy planned already. Good. 
Excellent. Silver, how's your um, FTMO going? And Ash, how's your FTMO going? Good to see. Uh, I, mean, I think you're in gold again, Ash, right? I saw this morning. So hopefully that one goes goes well for you. It's a good thing that you're just placing trades without those emotions, even though you've, I know you've, I mean, you're, you're, lo you're having very minimal loss, right? Which is a good thing about your strategy. Because when you come out, if it's a 0.1% and you lose, that's, you can lose three and then on one big winner, certainly on a, on a, on a on gold, you can make it all back, right? So uh, I see the premise of your strategy. Negative three, okay, you still got plenty of time, plenty of time. After the third candle, so the red candle, I presume. One, two, three. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so USD yen, I mean, I would just, yeah, just let that run. You know, I, I do personally worry a lot about a, l a little extension, but is, has it told us it wants to stop yet? Not yet. So if it wants to run, just let it run. Let it run. And, um, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> there's nothing much I can say apart from that, Martin. You know, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be buying it up here right now, but since you're already in it, then it doesn't really matter, right? So you let this momentum go. You're on certainly on the right side of it. If you get a push in the stock market, Jesus, the yen could weaken off again. The yen could weaken off again. So, yeah. Yeah, so it was the red one, right? Okay, got you. I've got you. Decent stop, looking to come up to the 126, yeah, yeah. So this is your TP1. So your TP1 is a bit higher than one to one now, right? Probably what? This is probably about 1.5, I guess. Do you do risk reward or are you looking for the next resistance zones? Okay, yeah, yeah, fair enough, okay. Yeah, good, good. Take some profit on that decent push. Yeah, absolutely. I've kept partials on AJ Long yesterday and let it run. AJ Long. Well, that should be quite good. Yeah, I mean, see, the thing with AJ is that this is nice. <laughs> That's nice. I can't deny it. Even though we've come from here, we've had that kind of period of, of correction through time rather than price. It's just that daily chart. Just that daily chart. So, yeah, if you're in it, I mean, this is the great thing about taking partials, right? Is you, you're letting it run risk-free. You don't really, you're not really worried about what happens, yeah? Top of the spring candle is my one-to-one, -one, so I'm taking, okay, good. Good. Wait for TP2 and so on, yeah. Well done. Well done. Well done. All right, let's have a quick look back at GU. Uh, hopefully, it'll give me a nice move today. Go, baby, go. That would be absolutely lovely. That would be absolutely lovely. 2% still on the board. And uh, possibly, I don't want to eat my hat here, but possibly the call of not taking a TP1 on this because of the risk reward may come to fruition. And I think I think I deserve it. <laughs> I think I always think I deserve it, but I think I deserve a nice winner here. You know, a 3-4 R would be, would be lo lovely for this week. But I'm certainly not taking that out right now. Absolutely not. I'll just let you type, Martin. Any other questions? Anything you uh, guys want me to look at uh, before I, I head off? The viewers have been proven to get to great one-to-one. -one. So, yes, I'm 11 trades in, nine winners, two losers. Wow, that's amazing. Nine winners and two losers all went to one-to-one. -to -one. Yeah. So a high win rate. Very. I mean, that's, that's the thing. You've got your data there, right? If you've got a very high win rate and you get one-to-one, -one, then who cares, right? You know, I always think if traders can get their win rate higher, okay, your payoff will naturally come off. Um, it's certainly a good kind of, you know, uh, let's say a base strategy. I'm not saying that can't be your main, uh, um, a very, it is a very, what am I trying to say? Lost my words. If you've got a strategy like this, for example, like I do with my breakout, my breakout retest, it's got a little bit higher win rate, but a lower payoff ratio. It allows you to develop something kind of additionally, like my, my aggressive, where you're doing the opposite, a bit lower payoff, a bit lower win rate, but a higher payoff. So you've got the kind of best of both worlds here. But developing this, I think, for, for newer traders is um, is a great kind of starting position in terms of your trading. But nine winners and two losers, that's brilliant. Brilliant. Well done. 
Well done, Martin. Well done. Okay, no more questions. Um, no more questions. No more questions. All reversal setups. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> Excellent. Reversals, they are very powerful. Very powerful. Certainly against the trend and certainly on things like news. You know, pound USD. Slightly, I mean, I don't know whether you could have gotten that one. Here, I guess. Well, I don't think it was probably, it didn't probably fit you because we didn't have, or you could do one, two, three, and then your entry, stop up here. You could have been, uh, I don't know. I don't know, I don't, I'm not quite sure, but anyway. Also use it to confirm trend up or down, so it gives me a double head uh, edge. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, they're very powerful, very powerful. Used in the right context. Right context, very powerful. All right, guys, I uh, appreciate you joining as always. I will be back on tomorrow. Also, the other thing besides, they, they give you access to their Discord, right? So you get access to the Discord, and also they asked me to send some documents in so let me see if I can get this, just so people are aware. Again, I'm just doing this for a first time. And um, once I kind of say, okay, everything's all right, then, um, you know, I'm happy to start, um, happy to start, um, I can't speak this morning, <laughs> um, recommending it to you guys. So I, I sent the contract through. I don't know if I can get the, you sent, I sent the contract through, they make you send in your, your passport or proof of address. Then they send you this email saying, congratulations to DocBains. I don't know why they send us a certificate, because that doesn't really make sense, because I've not done anything yet. Successfully on board as a StockNet instituted by showing us good trading skill. I haven't actually done any of this yet. So this I quite don't understand, but anyway, it's a nice little touch, right? Nice little touch. And they've been very professional so far. They've been very professional. So Sai, the only thing is 8% drawdown ash. That's the only rule. That is the only rule. I believe, it, I believe it resets once you scale your account. So if I go from the 10K to the 20K, I make 10% go to 20K, I think that 8% resets, which is why for this, I'm going to go down to 1.5% risk till I get a little bit of a buffer and uh, then move back up to my normal two. But I believe it, that's it. You know, that's the only, that's the only drawdown of it which is obviously for me perfect, right? Because you guys know the trader I am. So for me, that's perfect. And it's just for me, just looking to build that, you know, and, and compounding, you know, once you start to double and double and double, yeah, okay, it's gonna take some time, but I'm in, I'm in no rush, right? Yeah, I think, I think I'm pretty sure it goes on. It wasn't March Madness, I was being, I was being wrong. So if we go here, I can have a look actually. Oh God, this bloody thing. Crosswalks, here you go. Traffic lights, God. Oh, none there. There's one there. Uh, here we go. Let's, let's, let's find out. I'll just go to checkout. So it says, got, I don't know why it doesn't take you to checkout. Anyway, I'm not gonna go and complain about their website at all. It's not what I wanna do. Yeah, you've still got Easter Bonanza. When is this on for? So it's still there. It's still there, Dill. Still there. <coughs> I think probably Easter Bonanza, right? So it'll go possibly till the end of the month. Possibly till the end of the month. I guess that's when Easter is, right? End of April. Anyway. Yeah, no worries, mate. No worries, mate. All right, guys. Uh, have a lovely day. Trade safe. And I'll see you all tomorrow. Peace.